Hi, it's Eva Cartman, and you're listening to the Dream Big Podcast Show, the place to go to learn, laugh, and grow. Today, we welcome New York Times bestselling author Neil Pazricha, who shares the secret to happiness and how to be awesome. This is episode 157. You ready? It's time to dream big. Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. We're inspiring you to shoot for the moon, take aim and go. We bring to you amazing guests who truly love what they do. Every day they're living their dreams, and so can you. Dream big, take action to reach your goals. Are you pumped yet? It's showtime, let's rock and roll. Hi, Big Dreamers. Before I introduce Neil Pasharicha, I wanted to let you know that you can now get my free Confidence Secrets course, which is over one hour of me teaching you about how to develop your superpower of self-belief. This Confidence Secrets course is going to be part of the Dream Big Academy that we launch later this year. But for a limited time, we're offering access to this content for free at dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. If you're a younger Big Dreamer listening to this, please ask your parents to help you get it. Again, it's completely free for a limited time, so please take advantage and get the course while you still can at dreambitpodcast.com slash beta. Okay, now let's turn our attention to this week's amazing guest, Neil Pasricha. Typically, my parents and I work super hard to secure great guests like Neil for the podcast. We research, film personalized invite videos, follow up, but every so often we hit the lottery and the opportunity for me to interview an amazing guest falls right into our laps. In this case, we received an email introduction from Humble the Poet, who was my guest in episode 146, connecting us with his friend Neil Pasricha. In addition to being Humble's friend, Neil also happened to be the New York Times best-selling author of five books, including The Book of Awesome and The Happiness Equation, which together has spent over 200 weeks on bestseller lists and have sold over 1 million copies. He hosts the Apple Best of 2018 award-winning podcast, Three Books, with Neil Pasricha and gives over 50 speeches a year to audiences such as royal families in the Middle East and corporations like Spotify. Prior to his current work, Neil completed his MBA from Harvard Business School and spent a decade as Director of Leadership at Walmart. I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Neil, and know you will too. So without further ado, let's roll the tape. Hi, Neil. Hi, Eva. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I love dreaming big. (laughs) My mom and I watched your TED Talk, and you shared how when you were going through a very difficult time in your life, your marriage was falling apart, and one of your close friends died, you decided to start a website called 1000awesomethings.com. Can you tell us more about that website and how it saved your life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, as you said, you know, I was in a marriage and it wasn't going well. My best friend had severe mental illness and he did not make it, sadly. And so I started a website called 1000awesomethings.com. And all I did, honestly, was come home from work every night and write about something like flipping to the cold side of the pillow in the middle of the night or wearing warm underwear from just out of the dryer or finally peeing after holding it forever. You know, uh, tiny little small simple pleasures that I just think we all overlook. And so the blog grew into, it won the award for best blog in the world two years in a row, and it had 50 million visitors, and it turned into my first book, which is called The Book of Awesome. So my first book really is just a printout of the blog. Wow, we talk a lot about the importance of being an optimist a lot on the podcast, and in life, unfortunately, bad things that are outside of your control will happen. So looking for even little things in your life that are awesome is such a valuable skill. 
It absolutely is. Here's the thing, you know, we only live about 30,000 days. And if you ask most people, hey, what are you looking forward to? They tell you the big things. They tell you the sort of five or 10 biggest days, you know, my my wedding, uh, you know, the, the day I, I'm going to buy my first house or when I land my first job or get, get a big promotion or publish my first book, say. Well, the thing is, Eva, that only adds up to like 10 <laughs> out of the 30,000 days we were alive. And so the whole argument for looking at the small, simple pleasures is they comprise 99.9% .9 of our lives. Most of our life is spent thinking about you know, the smell of the bakery air when we walk by the store, hitting a string of green lights if we're late to work, getting called up to the dinner buffet first at a wedding. And so I like to focus on them because ultimately they just comprise more of our life. You're totally right. Like when we started the Dream Big podcast, it was a way for my parents to help me develop confidence uh, to talk to people because I was actually really shy when I was younger. And this was just a little thing for me so that I would be happy and I could talk to people. And of course, it turned out to be much bigger than that. And now it's helping millions of young big dreamers learn about confidence and optimism and hard work. And it's the same for you. While a thousand awesome things dot com was launched um, just for you at first when you were going through a rough time, it kind of took on a life of its own and became so much bigger than you too. Can you share the surprise success of the blog and how it changed your journey? Yeah, sure. You know, here's the funny thing is that, you know, the internet is this amazing magical place where if you're me, you put things out there all the time. I started lots of blogs before 1000 Awesome Things when I was a teenager, when I was in my 20s, when I was in my mid-20s. None of them worked. None of them took off. Um, but I was exploring, and I was learning, and I was growing. And so eventually, when 1000 Awesome Things took off, it was partly because I had been trying random things online for so long. So I just won't want listeners to think, oh, Dream Big got so successful right away. You know, I'll just start one and it'll be like that. Sometimes you just get lucky and sometimes it just takes a long time. My biggest advice to people would be keep trying new things over and over again and make sure you decide how you will measure success. For some people, it might be reaching a lot of people like you are or like I am. For others, it might be just getting something off their chest or making their mother proud or you know, getting some recognition from a peer or a, an industry journal. So make sure you define what success is to you, and it doesn't always have to be huge in order to be successful. Yeah, like you don't always know the exact destination of your journey because um, sure, you have like, your meaning of success in your head, but then after you hit that mark, it could become so much bigger. And sometimes um, you you're never you're never gonna know whether it's gonna become bigger or not. But it's mostly just what you're gonna be happy with. And if if that's helping people, if that's making a positive difference in the world, and then there's also, from that, you can get many opportunities beyond your wild imagination and um, kind of like the Dream Big Podcast and 1,000 Awesome Things. Yeah, exactly. And in my most recent book, The Happiness Equation, Eva, I actually draw out a little triangle. And I say there's a success triangle. One side is sales, okay? That means the thing got really big and really popular. You got lots of hits, lots of downloads. The other side is social which means you get recognition from a peer. Maybe you're written up in a special newspaper, or maybe you win, if you're a movie, you win an Academy Award, or you get some sort of industry recognition. Then the third and final one is self. Are you happy with what you accomplished? And my argument when I talk to people about the success triangle is that you can't have all three. Look at the Academy Awards. Typically, the movie that wins Best Picture, which is the biggest social uh, success you can have in the movie industry, isn't a box office hit. It's something like Moonlight that makes $18 million, whereas a movie like you know, The Fast and the Furious 7 will get no Academy Awards, no social success, but it'll make $700 million at the box office. My point is you can't have all of them, so choose what kind of success you actually want. Yeah, and you know that kind of relates to your three A's because I guess if you put all three of them together, it kind of makes uh, – triangle of success because 
you share about three A's leading to an awesome life, which are attitude, awareness, and authenticity. And I love that because it's so easy to remember. And do you mind if we talk about those three A's briefly? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. So let's start with attitude. Why is attitude important, especially when something that you perceive as unfair or bad happens in your life? Absolutely. So this whole model, the three A's of awesome is from my TED talk. When the book of awesome came out and it became a bestseller, I was invited to do a TED talk um, here in Toronto. And I talked about the three things that helped me kind of get through my divorce and losing my friend. The first one was attitude. Here's the thing. Uh, We know from research, Eva, that 50% of your happiness is genetic. So you are born one way. I was born one way. Everybody's born one way. On top of that, 10% is your circumstances, which means what's happening to you, and the remaining 40% is what you do about it. So 40% is what you can control. 40% is do you um, exercise? Do you meditate? Do you do a fun podcast like this that cheers you up because you talk to interesting people? And I loved your your, uh, episodes with Mel Robbins and with Chris Hatfield and with Humble the Poet, and I've been listening to you for the last couple days, and it's beautiful. I can imagine that's like a good gratitude practice for you. So my point on attitude is you get to choose how you respond. Most of what you can control, that 40%, remember you can't control your genetics and you can't control your circumstances. So pretty much all you can control is how you deal with it and what practices you put into your day to make sure you're cultivating a positive mind. You know, we've had so many guests on the podcast who prove that no matter what happens in your life, it's possible to be an optimist. Like you said, Chris Hadfield or one of our guests, uh, Sean Stevenson, um, who unfortunately recently passed away, and he was proof of this. He was born with a rare bone disorder that caused his bones to break very easily, and he lived his life in a wheelchair, but he was the most positive person I ever talked to. Yeah, there's a really famous study done about lottery winners and paraplegics, and it shows that even after the person uh, wins a lottery or becomes a paraplegic, that's somebody that you know loses a, loses a limb in a car accident or something, say, within a year, they have not only reverted to their baseline, but in a lot of cases, the person who had the accident is even happier. They aren't dealing with expenses and changing social relationships and all kinds of stresses. Instead, they feel lucky to be alive. And the other argument I heard on this, Eva, which you might find interesting, is that there's a study or some people that think bronze medalists at the Olympics are actually happier than silver medalists. Have you heard about this? Wow. No, I haven't. So the argument is that silver medalists think, ah, if I was a second faster, I would have got gold. Whereas bronze medalists think, wow, I'm lucky to be on the podium, you know, a second slower and I would not have got a medal. So there's a theory that if you have less to be happy for, you're also more aware of what you have. Yeah, that that sounds amazing. Like, like I get what I get what you're saying like if you're the bronze medalist if you're in the Olympics and you got just one like step lower then you wouldn't even be standing there and the silver medalist they're thinking about wow if I just got one more then I'd be I could have gotten gold Like, why didn't I get gold? I mean, part of it comes down to what you choose to compare yourself to, right? Like, you run a very successful podcast. You could easily look at other podcasts bigger than yours and say, you know, oh, no, I wish I I wish I had more. But instead, I heard you say earlier, I'm affecting millions of people. And I've seen your website. I've seen the courses you're offering. I've, ta- I've heard you talk about building your own confidence and how you're trying to teach other people to build theirs. So you're not looking up. You're looking across. Right, you, Or you can look down and say, wow, look how far I came. The secret to happiness oftentimes is simply comparing yourself to your former self, not to others. That is so true. This all ties, ties down to attitude. Like whether you think whether you're going to be happy or sad about it, you can think, am I going to stare and think, Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? Well, and you know what I love to say, Eva, is is the the glass, it turns out, is not half empty and it's not half full. It is refillable. Because of all the research on science, we now know that you can choose how full your glass is based on what you do about it. 
So in The Happiness Equation, my most recent book, or in You Are Awesome, which is the new one I have coming in November, I'm always trying to share with people, hey, here's some of the things you can do to refill your own glass. Yeah. The, the first A was attitude. And I know that the second A is awareness. So can you share what it means to be aware and why you give the example of a three-year-old in your TED Talk? <laughs> sure. In my three-year-old, I say, I love hanging out. Oh, sorry. In my TED Talk, I say, I love hanging out with three-year-olds because they're seeing the world for the first time. Having a sense of awareness is about preserving your inner three-year-old, remembering that you used to be three years old and seeing everything like you're seeing it for the first time. See, Eva, I, I grew up with a dad who came from India, and he was an immigrant to Canada where I live. And I didn't realize when I was a child that it was his first time going skiing. It was his first time eating a hamburger at McDonald's. It was his first time, you know, doing all these things. So when I was a kid, I, he was like, wow, look at this. Or can you believe that? Or like, let's go see a movie. And he was like, it was his first movie he'd ever seen. And so I didn't realize that was unusual, but it made me realize that my dad was living life because he had just come to Canada, like everything was brand new. And it gave me the sense that in order to be happy and to live an awesome life, we have to preserve that inside ourselves, not get cynical as we get older, but instead choose and seek to find these small pleasures. I get what you mean. I have a four-year-old sister, Sophia, and while she does drive me crazy at times, <laughs> everything is just so new and exciting for her, and it's fun to be around her for that reason. I mean, picture her eating ice cream. Right, like in, within a cone. Like I don't know her, but I'm imagining that's a really fun experience for you. Oh uh, yeah, especially when I have to clean up her face after she gets it all over. <laughs> My uh, son, who's one year old, has just learned how to take a uh, a popsicle stick and stab it into my ice cream cone and like just rub it all over his face. So it's like a hilarious, delicious, beautiful thing. <laughs> so the third A is authenticity. Could you share what authenticity means? Sure. Authenticity is just about being you and being cool with that, letting your heart lead you and put you in places that satisfy you. Um, I recently interviewed Malcolm Gladwell for my podcast, which I'd love to have you on sometime, which is called Three Books. And in my podcast, what I do is I ask people to tell me about the three books that changed their life. And so in Malcolm Gladwell's interview, he said to me, because one of his books was really about these, I thought it was quite a nerdy book. And, and Malcolm Lau was pretty famous for being a pretty nerdy guy. Um, and I asked him, so tell me tell me about, about how you raise nerds. And he said, you know what? The nerds allies are not obvious, but the nerd has to, has to work harder to find them. And in that statement, what I heard, Eva, was in the world today where the internet has flattened everything, and you won't, you probably won't know a world without it, it is now easier than ever to find people like us. You can just look for a very specific subreddit or a specific YouTube channel or a very specific podcast. But when I was growing up, it was a lot harder to be different. And so when I was preaching authenticity, I was talking to little me's out there, people who have a certain passion or a hobby or something that makes them different. I mean, my son, who's three years old, loves wearing dresses to school. You know, I don't know of any other boys at his school that wears dresses but he loves wearing dresses. He just thinks they're comfortable. He thinks they're pretty, and we totally support it. Like He is being authentic to himself to wear a dress, and I love that about him. And my goal is to not never stamp that out of him, but to let him embrace his true self. Yeah, because when you're being yourself, you are following your heart, and everything will fall into place. And you'll also be happy because you're not faking it. Like, my... Four-year-old sister, Sophia, she also loves wearing dresses, like, all the time. She doesn't, if you take out a shirt and shorts out of her closet, she will honestly grab those out of your hand, put it back in the closet, and grab a dress instead, because she loves them, too. Exactly. the three, And that's why the three A's are there. They're just guiding principles, attitude, awareness, and authenticity. And I called that TED Talk the three A's of awesome because in my mind, they were what helped me get through the divorce and the loss of my friend. But also, they're things that I come back to over and over and over again. And I gave that TED Talk 10 years ago, but still in my life today, if you ask me, hey, what principles do I try to live my life by? I think, have a great attitude, be aware and see simple pleasures, and be authentic to who I am. And those three things, I hope, I think, will continue to be guiding for me as I get older. Yes, the three A's are 
amazing concepts in life. But I know another amazing thing is your new book. So I know you have a new book coming out soon called You Are Awesome, How to Navigate Change, Wrestle with Failure, and Live an Intentional Life. Now, I know awesome has been a theme of many of your books, but what makes this one different? Well, one thing that's really struck me, Eva, is that we live in this weird time where we should all be pretty happy. We've got clean water in our taps. We feel safe when we walk out our front door. We can marry who we want. We can live where we please. You know, we've never lived longer. We've never been wealthier. We've never had higher education rates. Pretty much on the surface level, you look around the world, you think, well, this is the best time ever to be alive. But at the same time, Despite people like you being in the world, I don't know why, but things like loneliness, anxiety, depression, these things are also going up at the same time. And so we're a puzzle for me, and I kind of realized that it's because we don't have enough stress and challenge in our life. So today, any type of failure or perceived failure actually causes us anxiety because we don't know how to process it. We don't know how to use this muscle that I called resilience to get through things. And as a father, I'm scared that my kids are going to grow up not soft, but they're going to be a little thin-skinned, right? They're going to be sort of afraid to fail. And so the purpose of the new book, You Are Awesome, and you read it in the subtitle, is, hey, how do you wrestle with failure? How do you get through tough challenges? And so all I do in that book, kind of like my previous ones, is I share nine lessons or nine secrets in order to turn your brain positive and recover from failure when inevitably – you get dealt a bad blow. Yeah, most of our listeners are incredibly lucky to not live in war or poverty, to not worry about your next meal. But when you have so many opportunities and life is good, it sometimes makes it more difficult to deal with the challenges when they do come up. So it sounds like this will be an important book to make sure we have the strategies and tools when life does not go according to plan. I mean, that's exactly it. And don't forget, we've talked about the virtues of the internet, Eva, right? Your podcast being a great example, but also the internet and cell phones especially have a lot of problems. We often compare ourselves to other people. We often feel lesser than others. We often, you know, look at them right before bed and kind of jolt our mind and can't focus anymore. So part of what I'm also trying to do is help people focus, not quite meditate, but come up with meditate, meditate, <laughs> I'm stumbling, meditative practices that can help focus and center and ground your mind so you can get through the day in a calmer way. Yeah, you're totally right. That, that sounds like a great idea to, like some people, like during the day, they can get really stressed out. So just to have them meditate and like regain their focus it will be amazing so that they can just keep on going with their day without having any major disruptions so they can they can like work in peace and quiet yeah, exactly. And a good example of that, one of the things I share in You Are Awesome is this idea of like what I call two-minute mornings. And so every morning when I wake up, I answer three questions for myself or three prompts, which are I will let go of, I am grateful for, and I will focus on. I know it sounds simple and it might sound really kind of trivial to people, but research shows that if you write down something you will let go of, you actually eject it from your brain. So you don't worry about it, whether that's I have five pounds of fat on my stomach or I'm comparing myself to another author who sold way more books or whatever it is. I am grateful for, we've talked about this before, writing down awesome things, right? Makes you happy. And I will focus on, helps us eliminate all the things we could do in our day and help us focus on one simple thing that we will do. So those three prompts help me build resilience because I then feel more grounded throughout my days. I love that, Neil, and it's just so interesting how so many of our guests have well-defined morning routines, and that's a pattern that I've definitely noticed, and it makes sense because you are settling the tone of the entire day. And also, I was wondering, with your new book, You Are Awesome, when it does come out, um, where can you get it, and when will it come out? Yeah, well, uh, well, thank you so much for for asking that. And I, 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 um, 
I'm excited about this because I, I really wrote it as a letter to my kids on how to live a resilient life. And so it's called You Are Awesome, How to Navigate Change, Wrestle with Failure, and Live an Intentional Life. Uh, it is available everywhere books are sold, whether that's Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local independent bookstore, uh, anywhere you can buy books, it should be there. It comes out on November 5th, 2019 from Simon and Schuster. Wow. So remember, guys, after Neil comes out with her with his book, then make sure you go and you get it right away because there will be major a major rush for this book and you want to be first to get it. So make sure you get the book. Now, Neil, I have some final questions before we end the interview. If you go back in time and talk to your 10-year-old self, what would be the best advice? I would probably tell myself not to work too hard even though I uh, am probably not even halfway through my life today. The truth of the matter is, Eva, I have always pushed myself to work so hard. I don't know if that's because my parents are immigrants and getting straight A's and stuff was really important. But if I could tell myself one thing, it'd be go to parties more, get out of the house more, hang out with friends more. That will always be the stuff you remember. Wow. What trait do you have that has enabled you to take your big dreams and make them a reality? Well, I guess I can't say I've been lucky, although I have been. That is the trait that comes to mind first. Um, but in addition to that, I just think that my basic rule in life is that you meet interesting people in interesting places. And it's very easy for us to fall into bubbles or patterns or the same friend groups or the same podcast we listen to or whatever. And so remember this advice. You meet interesting people in interesting places. Push yourself out of your natural comfort zone. Take the road less traveled, go to a movie you would never have seen before, go to an author signing that you for a book you've never heard of, um, go to meetup.com and go to an interesting event that you don't know anybody at, go to parties where you don't know anybody. And inevitably, whenever I've done that, I end up having an interesting conversation with someone that I would never have met before. And it challenges my thinking and helps me grow. That's great. When you've doubted yourself in the past, what made you overcome those fears and continue to pursue your dream? Well, I still doubt myself. <laughs> so doubting yourself, I think. I think the thing is that I'd like to share is that it's okay to doubt yourself. It's okay. You know, I know it's called dream big, but doubting yourself is part of that. And even the most successful people, people far more successful than me, I can tell you behind the scenes, behind the stages, in the back of the YouTube videos, they're chewing their fingernails and worried, okay? So we all are. That's part of our human nature. I think the challenge is just living with that, accepting that, being okay with that, saying, I'm going to doubt myself and I'm going to do it anyway. That's amazing. That's And that's a very good lesson for our big dreamers. So big dreamers, it's okay to doubt yourself. You just want to make sure that while even though you're doubting yourself, you, you still want to make sure that that doubt doesn't completely take over you and you don't get your your big dreams a uh, reality but it's still okay to doubt yourself but again you definitely want to make sure you get that dream that big dream accomplished so neil you have already made many of your dreams a reality but if you look at yourself today what's your big dream for the future well i'd like to be known amongst my family and my friends as a great son, a great husband, a great father, and a great friend. And those are things that you can never be perfect at, but they're things you can always do better at. And so more than anything, when I'm looking at my life from my death, but I hope I can confidently say I spent as much time as possible with the people I love and I was good to all of them. That's amazing. And for our final question, where can our audience find out more about you? Every single thing we've talked about, the videos, the uh, books, um, all my free writing, I write articles every week, is all available at www.neil.blog. So that's www.neil.blog. That's my website. Okay, well, everybody, make sure you check out neil.blog as soon as you can. Do it right now after this, after this podcast ends because I definitely want to – Get that book, and I'm sure you guys do too. So get the book once it's published. Tune in to Neil's blog, 1,000 Awesome Things. 
and dream big. Thank you so much, Neil, for being on the podcast. It is my pleasure, Eva. You were doing something very special. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. A huge thank you for Neil for such an insightful interview. I especially love the three A's we covered, attitude, awareness, and authenticity, because it provides a memorable framework for being awesome. As always, all the links to everything we discussed are on our show notes at dreambigpodcast.com slash 157. Did you enjoy this special episode? If so, please tell all your friends and family about the Dream Big Podcast. If everyone listening could just tell one person about this episode, that would lead to a chain reaction that would get the Dream Big Podcast in front of so many new people, which would be amazing. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you could be notified whenever we release a new episode. Finally, if you're interested in being part of the Dream Big Academy, please go to dreambigpodcast.com slash beta. And right now, we are giving away the Confident Secrets course for free. Have your parents go to dreambitpodcast.com slash beta to get the free course that includes over one hour of me teaching you how to become more confident, which is the key to achieving your big dreams. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Eva Cartman reminding you that you have unlimited potential. Your dream's not optional. You need to make them essential. So take massive action to turn those big dreams into reality. Live with passion, the way life was meant to be. I'll see you next episode. Bye.